Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Richard Foster and Hugh McDonald are with me. Ruffy back next Monday because obviously um, I think he's in a playoff final in the golf uh, where he's on holiday. I mean, oh, what a life it is, Hugh. Eh? So it's, uh, this week it's just the Peter and show. Yeah, yeah. P Peter and Foster. I mean, it's as simple as that. We sound, we sound like a 1950s old cronies actually doing this, doesn't it? We're going to sing. sing all songs. Yeah, down gonna, by the mill when I was like, 16, 16 that's right. what we're going to sing he's looking as if we're complete and utter rockets uh, which we are which we are <laughs> uh, and over and above that I must apologise because I, I did notice a couple of things obviously we like to try and welcome everybody to uh, the show we're going to talk football we like a wee bit of banter as well um uh, thank, thankfully, we're off Facebook there. We do a wee preview on mm. Facebook, um, and then we're on to YouTube, which has got a little bit more license because obviously he's wearing a T-shirt and he's he's got a mermaid on there, and she hasn't got a bra on. Now that on Facebook would have been banned right away. I would, uh, would, have, would have been would have been bummed off. Uh, but uh, he's, he's <laughs> he didn't notice that, did you? Uh, I've got my simple minds hoodie on, uh, Hugh. Good on you. You were there last night. If we're talking about classic football matches, and hopefully we're going to get a cracker. Uh, tonight between Braga and Rangers I decided for the 18th time to see this band they were absolutely magnificent now I know he he's a big fan of Amy McDonald mm. his wife but they were on another planet no, they're good they're good uh, I mean it's I don't know how many years ago <laughs> I've seen some lines yeah. it must be decades ago since I've seen them yeah he actually said to me that he can remember he said it was great being back in Glasgow uh -huh. he said because uh, it reminds him as if it was only yesterday when they did their first gigs in a pub called the Mars Bar. Yes, and I thought, no, no. only in Glasgow <laughs> could you get slang for a rough bar. <laughs> Is that I, fair? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there was a really vibrant music scene at that time as well. Peter, you know, yeah. postcard records, etc., etc. A lot of talent coming through. Uh, you know, whereas uh, nowadays I look and I wonder if there's enough Scottish talent uh, out there doing the music. Somebody's going to tell me otherwise. I mean, obviously, present company. Mm. Uh, we understand, but um, nevertheless, there used to be absolutely barrel loads of great bands, um, so it was absolutely brilliant. You know me, Hugh, I don't mind being a geek. I don't know if you're a geek. You, you're a geek yourself, uh, a wee bit of memorabilia. You know, you only have to look in our studios to see. I love all that stuff, yeah, and I love all the music stuff as well, and I'm really geekish about music, and the thing I, I love about music is that you're never too old for it, and you can revisit it. And you can like what you want, and uh, there's no there's no barriers. There's you, can no sit like, you can sit and you know get into. I was uh, uh, the other uh, six months ago. I was going to Air United, and I stopped the the car and put down the car because the guy was asking me, you know, you got your press, you got your condition to put it down, and uh, I realised I was playing uh, NWA. Uh, uh, sort of, and shall we call it politely, an anti-police song yes, as a put it down. And the guy was looking at me and says, what is this old pensioner doing playing, you know, yeah, rap NWA. music? Yeah. Ah, it's so loud. Uh, like. Exactly, and it, if it uh. makes me feel old, I've got the 12 inch version of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, apart from... It feel old to know that I don't yeah. even know what that means. No, exactly, that's why I can see the, I can uh, see uh, the uh, thousand yards staring at you right away. Um, listen, um, we talk about bands, never mind that. What about, um, what about the football? There's some great football on offer. Uh, tonight and none more so than uh, in Portugal. Braga against Rangers, big match. Uh, Rangers over the, the course of this have been bagging a fair bit of money. Obviously, people think it's, well, it's about the prestige of trying to get to the latter stages of the tournament, but when you can get yourself another two and a half million or so uh, from getting past them, that will be uh, you know, a point not lost on the board. No, I mean, we've spoke about it. We've spoke about the the whole Sydney debacle and the, and the money that that was going to generate for the club, um, as to why the board would would want to do something like that, um, you know they've they've put in their own money to to fund the club, so yeah, yes, great for, for the players to win the tie. And now the players won't be they won't be thinking about the, what, what money they can earn for the club. Um, I would imagine they're probably on a pretty good bonus themselves, but I think that money that they can get for the club is is massive. You know we spoke yesterday about. Potentially, Rangers having to sell players because of the financial situation, or players wanting to leave because they feel that the time is up. But yeah, I mean, when a club can get two and a half million pounds for, for winning a tie, then then it's huge for them. Um, and obviously, it'll be huge for them. Kind of in the summer when Van Bronckhorst gets, you know, if he gets any money to spend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, at the end of it all, it's not quite the Champions League money to mm. be honest with you. It's you know, it's it's minute by comparison, but still, you get all the way to the final and win it, you, you get over seven million 
more money uh, just for getting to the final and winning it as well. So uh, that would be the that would be the ultimate dream. But um, this stage for Rangers, they're not coming up against a side that you're suddenly saying to yourself, this this is an easy win. Mm. Rangers are going to have to get back on track for me, Hugh. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a business end of the second biggest tournament in Europe. I mean, if you look at all four ties tonight, I mean, the only one I think is slightly askew, and I, and I could be wrong with that, is like Frankfurt playing Barcelona, because Frankfurt are a Midland Bundesliga team. Xavi looks as if he's got Barcelona's mojo going again. Yeah. But the rest of the ties, West Ham, Lyon, you know, I mean... That, that, that's, it's one of those nights where you would flick, wouldn't you? I mean, it's great. Rangers brag. I mean, brag is a great story. Brag is... Um, a club that's been developing for two years had decided very strongly to go into youth development. They've got this manager, Carvajal, who... Uh, he's bought it, into it, hasn't he? He's bought into it, and he's not... The thing about Carvajal is he's not a man that's uh, burdened with any self-doubt, you know? He's, he's, yeah. He fancies his bar, as we used to say in the old <laughs> days. Quite right to him, he's a top-class manager, and he's very keen in moving these young players up and on. By the way, I think he's pretty keen in moving himself up and on as well. Yeah. No, uh, no shame to him for that. But uh, I've watched him a couple of times this season. There's a couple of really classy players. I mean, they're a good, fresh, young team, basically. But the left winger Gomez is a really good player. In the centre half, uh, camera is a guy that Liverpool went for yeah. about 18 months ago, bid 18 million for him. Bragg had knocked that back. Uh, so that price tag will be going up. So they're a decent team. They're, yeah. a, they're a really good. It's a, it's a smashing tie. It's also a lesson, I think, for a number of clubs who are looking for the ultimate blueprint. I mean, we've had the money ball mm. situation where clubs will look into every stat possible to try and pick out mm. every nugget, maybe an experienced person who could still contribute, and then the youngsters coming through with great stats. But the one thing about him, he's, I think he's actually promoted 12 academy players. Mm -hmm. You know, So he's, he's invested in whatever the board has said to him, look, this is the way forward for us. And that's why I think Rangers, although they beat them a couple of years ago, this is this is a side with a wee bit more experience mm. now, and they've got some technically gifted players. Yeah, and, and what you get from younger players is the kind of energy, enthusiasm, mm. excitement. They kind of they're just coming into the game. Now, I'm not saying players of my age you fall out of love with the game, but these guys they're trying to build their careers. They're trying to make themselves a success. Now, with that comes a bit of inconsistency, um, but. It, what, like I say, what comes is a real energy. The, the technical level will be very, very good. You know, most European sides are. Um, they'll have pace. Um, they've got a lot of quality. And I think, I think it, you guys are right. Is it's it's a really good tie. It should be a really exciting tie because we're looking at it from a, a Scottish aspect, a Rangers point of view. Can they put Sunday's result behind them? Can they get themselves back on track? Can they survive without Alfredo Morelos? Um, and on the flip side you're going to get to watch another decent European team and see how they cope with Rangers and how Rangers cope with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about the predicted 11 for Rangers with no uh, Alfredo Morelos? The manager's been keen to point out that you know you just have to get on with it. There's no use moping about it. So McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Balogun and Bassey, Jack, Lindstrom, Kamara, Ramsey, Ruth and Kent. Will it be too far away from that, Hugh? Don't know where Doribo plays. He, I mean, he, you know, I know he, he was poor on Sunday. The, I think Kent will play. I'm, I'm, I, I, I was quite interested if, if, if Gio would go pretty strongly for pace up front, and you know maybe play Sakala uh, because of how quick he is, yeah. um, and you know looking to, to get the ball and move forward quickly. But I don't think that'll be. I don't think that'll be far uh, away from the team. I mean, the other thing about. Uh, Giovanni Bronckhorst as well as he's not been a guy for changing the team very well. I mean, Kamara is one of the people that's actually suffered actually, and probably from uh, the last, the previous Celtic game when when, when Rangers lost three nothing, he's he probably suffered from the Barisic obviously suffered from him, but from then on he's kept a template, uh, so he'll probably stick to it. Uh, uh, the interesting thing about it is this thing, you know, like when Richard was talking about the inconsistency of Braga because of the young players. It always strikes me that that's why, you know, Celtic and Rangers have got this kind of like dilemma, Peter, because people could be saying about, you know, why do Celtic and Rangers not give, you know, the youngest players that much of a chance? And it's Braga's 20 points behind in the league. Yeah. 
at Celtic Rangers, you can't do that. You can't say we're giving away this season just to bring on four academy players or six academy players. Or I, don't, I don't think it's fair on young players, you know, at Rangers and Celtic, to come into that cauldron and go, yeah. you have to win every week, you have to play well every week. It's not fair that yeah. they're, they're developing, they're learning their trade. It's great to come in and out of a good side and, and you know, you, you always want to bring young players in when the side are doing well. well um, because it's much easier for them, it's a better environment. And I think I say, to stick, you know, and you do get some players who do it and some players who mm. cope very well with it, but by and large, um, I think it's it's just a tad unfair at the start of your career mm. and you're trying to learn your trade you're trying to get up to speed with the game to go right well you need to be an 8 out of 10 today and you need to win the game Aye. so I think there's there's a bit of that involved as well Yeah John uh, says will Kent show up tonight or will he be posted missing uh, like he was after uh, the 7th minute on Sunday I, I mean I I think he's a, a really good talented player Ryan Kent I, I think he's one of those players I don't I just get a sense from him that he's one of those players that the manager has to, you know, put an arm around mm. him because he's he's got the talent. Uh, Giovanni Van Bronckers would just take him to the side and say, listen, if you're in the mood, we can win tonight. Mm. You know, go and, you know, play this counter that they're so good at. Uh, maybe not with Morelos there, but go and square up an up player and go past them. You've got the ability. Well, that is where a European away leg is what uh, Ryan Kent was built for. Yeah. You know, Breaking fast, having one on ones or three on threes or two on twos in the final third, making a good decision, having a good finish. Uh, that's what they'll be looking for. They'll be looking to you know, be looking for him because he's he's so integral to that. I think Morelis thing is is really difficult for Rangers because they don't not only do they lose him, but they don't have somebody who's Morelos part two, if you know what I mean. They don't have somebody that will get them up the park. That will, you know, the ball will stick to. I mean, I was really impressed with him against Dortmund because things were just going up to him, even on the touchline. Yeah. And he was jostling with Hummels or whatever and just getting the ball. And then you can build again from that. And they yeah. don't have that. But what they do have is they've got players that can pass, got players with pace. So they've got enough to cause problems. Yeah. And the one thing that I think Hugh makes a point, which I think is where he's a big loss, is the fact that he, uh, as well as having anybody who can hold the ball in, for me, at the back, well, your back row <coughs> is worth their weight in gold, um, for midfielders especially. But the other thing about him is he wins fouls in that final third and, and suddenly the team go, set piece, let's well, try. Yeah. There's another option for us. Yeah, because he's, he's willing to put in, you know, he, <coughs> he's good at reading the game, mm. you know, and he's willing to put his body in. When he can mm. see the defender coming, he puts his body yeah. between him and the ball, so the defender has to foul him to get it, and he's clever with it as well. Yeah. Um, and he also... What, I think what he does is he roughs defenders up. Mm. So he every time they get the ball, he's bumping into them, bumping into them. So then they think, right, when you get it next time, I'm going to get you back. Yeah. And then he goes, great, because I've now got a free kick. We'll get our team up the pitch. And I think he's, his, his all-round game this season, I think he's really, really improved. I mean, he, he drops in and he, he links the game really well. He'll run beyond. Um, he's obviously in Europe, his goal-scoring record's fabulous. Um, and I think he's a, he's a huge, huge miss. Yeah, this is a... It's a tough one to call. Uh, I think you, so. I've, I've watched uh, Braga's goals uh, all the way through the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, the style of goals that they've scored as well, the speed at which they play at times. I, I think I, I think Rangers would be happy, obviously happy to get a draw out of this mm -hmm. one. You can't rule out them producing something special again because they've done it consistently. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go two one Braga with Rangers to finish them. You know, get back into it and and finish them off at, at Ibrox. I think Rangers over two legs for me, can do it in front of a packed Ibrox, but I think Braga can take a lead there. I'd probably agree with you in both counts, Peter. I, I think what's really important tonight, though, is that um, in that Rangers team, as I said earlier, that Sunday's results just completely out the window. This is a new day. This is an arena where they played, I think, in fact, everybody thinks, has been their best football all season. This is an arena where they're comfortable with. They've beaten really good teams. They've beaten a Red Star team that finished top of Braga's group. Braga finished second to, to Red Star. So in horse racing terms, the form should show you that there's nothing to be completely uh, worried about there. They've beaten uh, the second team in the Bundesliga. So they should be going there and saying, right, we can we can do something here tonight. This this journey can go on. You know, this is not the end of the line. This is not a payday. This is not about the club getting extra money. We can go on. We can win this tie and, and keep it going. So, I think the attitude and the demeanour of the players tonight will be what 
you know, what I'll be interested in uh, for the whole 90 minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about Bragg. OK, they've still got uh, a number of young players in there. Are they inexperienced? Um, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is certainly not looking at that as an advantage for Rangers. I cannot compare those games. Um... And I think although Braga has, uh, you know, inexperienced players, they perform really well. It's not about experience, it's about your performances. So, uh, you know, you don't win against Monaco and Sheriff with an inexperienced team. Uh, you, you win against them with a well-organized team, a strong team, a good collective. And I think Braga has, has all of that. Some of these players will be a, a little older and wiser now after the defeat to Rangers a couple of years back. Maybe a wee bit of revenge in there. Yeah, you'd think so. I think I think that the most important thing is these players are a couple of years down the line. They've, they've played more games. They've got more experiences, um, and you know they'll. I think it's been discussed this week that Braga will also be looking at this tie, thinking them and possibly Frankfurt would have been one of the two teams that we would want want to, to draw. So they'll be going into this game thinking it's 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 a tie that we can win and we can go through and we can get the extra two and a half million and, and all the the riches that that brings. So it's. It's set up to be a fascinating tie. I think Rangers are going to need... I agree with both you guys in terms of the scores, and I think Rangers are going to need something close to the level of the Borussia Dortmund game mm -hmm. um, to get At a result. Home? Or, or here? Away from home, sorry, yeah. to, to, get, to get a result, because I, I do think Braga are going to be very, very dangerous, especially, um, you know, they move forward so quickly, as you guys have discussed. And I just think that if Rangers can reproduce something near... Dortmund, I think they'll, they'll still be in a tie come the second leg. If, if they fall short like they did on Sunday, then you know Braga will score goals against them. Yeah, well, prediction then for tonight? I'm going to go a bit more and just say, I'll say 3-1 Braga. 3-1 Braga. Um, OK, uh, you, caught me on, you caught me on the hop there with that one. Um, and I like the way you said, it's a new day. Mm. And I was waiting for you going, it's a new dawn. No, and I'm really really I was, good. Good. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for you to burst into that song there, yeah. <laughs> just as you got the old catchphrase out. We're in song mode. Uh, but they, they really have to. They've got to dump that from I mean, Sunday's... Was, was so dispiriting for for Rangers players, and yeah. you know because particularly the way they started, particularly and what they've got to do, and, and Richard will know better than 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 us is what, how easy it is to dump a game and move on. But really, that's really what they've they've got to do. They've got to say, listen, this is a new this is a, this is a, the the business end of a really top competition. We're in Braga against a team that we shouldn't be afraid of. Let's go again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, good, good record against Portuguese size Rangers mm. uh, of late. Uh, unbeaten in 13. Uh, as far as Braga are concerned at home, uh, four wins in a draw uh, in the five Europa League home games they've played this season. So, you know, uh, they are formidable at home as well and they will feel confident. It's all about opinions. What do you think yourself? Do you think Rangers are capable of winning in both legs? Or would you be happy if you're a Rangers fan to get out of Portugal uh, with a draw and then finish them off at Ibrox in front of a packed fanatical support. Um, so, fingers crossed for that. Let's not forget there's a Scottish interest in West Ham versus Leon, um, And, of course, David Moyes building a, a, a great reputation. Uh, in fact, some would say rebuilding it because of what had gone before. But um, we've always known he's a good coach and he considers this game against Leon tonight one of those special nights for the Hammers fans. But this one is obviously a little bit more special because you know to be in amongst all the European teams and things that we've not we've not had for years is really important for us. But we can't think any further. We're playing against a team who two years ago I think were in the Champions League semi final. Yeah, good point. You know, Leon were in the Champions League semi final, so they are going to be formidable. But if you are a Hammers fan and you are looking and you're saying to yourself, well, he saved us from relegation the first time he was there, mm -hmm. eventually brought him back, and suddenly when he was given time, domestically, it's a season to remember, even if they don't make the top four. They've had fantastic games, big wins in the Olympic Stadium and, and of course a European run which is still going this could be sensational for them yeah it certainly could and I think I think the most important thing you talk about there is time mm -hmm. I think you know clubs now seem to want a quick fix to everything mm -hmm. and when you're you're t taking a manager in and you want to allow him to express himself as a manager and, and, and you know kind of deal with the players he's got, he inherits initially and try and find a way to make them work and then slowly but surely bring in his own his own guys. That all takes time and you know Moyes is, is 
he's obviously a good manager. He's obviously a good people person because you look at his teams and his players, and it looks like they really want to play for him. You know, they'll, they'll put their bodies on the line. They'll, they'll give him everything he's got. And and choose right. They, they're a good side. They play good football. Um, you know, and Antonio up front is is he's a bit of an enigma. You know, because he's so quick. He, sometimes he looks a bit kind of raw. He looks a bit rusty, but he, he can be so effective for them. And he holds the ball in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, similar to Morelos, and he gets him up the pitch. But they've got. You know, they've got a lot of talented players and he's got them playing really well as a team. Yeah, I must admit, if you're a centre-half, Hugh, and you see Antonio coming towards you, I mean, he doesn't look as if he's got an ounce of fat on him. Mm. Aye, and the other thing as well is that uh, I've watched uh, West Ham twice recently, once in Seville, but once at Anfield. And, you know, I wouldn't say he gave Van Dyke problems because nobody really gives Van Dyke problems, but... He had a couple of chances in that game just with his pace, Peter, and it was just two poor finishes. And the thing about West Ham in that game, and when I saw them in Seville, they could have got a draw in Seville and nobody would have complained, and they went through in the tie. But against Liverpool, they could have had a draw that night. Uh, it was an evening, Saturday evening kickoff, and nobody could have complained that night. Yeah. In fact, towards the end, they had the better chances in Liverpool. Antonio missed a few, and I think Fernal, Fernal's missed one as well. And... and they could have got out of Anfield with a result and nobody could have complained. So he's building something really impressive there. Um, I just think with Moyes, you know, like, you know, one the career may be completely stained by that Manchester United thing where he went in. It's always the thing. Never go in after a legend. Go in, go in one after the legend. <laughs> but never go in after a legend when the manager, when the guy does all the transfer deals, David Gill goes as well. Yeah. So you land in the Manchester United. David Gill's gone. Fergie's gone. And you've got really the, difficult. You've got the nightmare that was Ed Woodward. Yeah. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, here's how <coughs> here's how West Ham, Leon, and Braga Rangers fits into the Europa League fixtures tonight. Um, I'm going to go Leipzig to win the first one. West Ham to edge it by a solitary goal. Mm. Barcelona to annihilate Eintracht Frankfurt and I'm just going to go Braga to win 2-1 but my feeling is I think Rangers can get through over the two legs what about you where's your money on the four um, similar first two I think will be home wins I think Barcelona will beat Frankfurt and I th- as we discussed I think Braga will beat Rangers I think that yeah I'd not go that I'm a betting man of no, course I'm not in my bet there is he uh, uh, <laughs> the last bet for me was Aldeniti uh, 50 uh, pence <laughs> But I think the going through the four that go through is really interesting because you would plump for Leipzig automatically because they're really good form. Thrash Dortmund the other week there, but Atalanta are smashing side as well. Yeah, Lyon and West Ham pff, over the two legs. Tight, tight. Rangers brag over the two legs. The probably the one I'm most confident. Oh, the only one I'm pretty confident. I think Barcelona will, will, will do Frankfurt over two legs. Yeah. Okay. I've got to say congratulations to Georgios Yakimakis. He is the Player of the Month. Uh, no surprise, really, when you look at what he did in the month of March. It was a very impressive. Five goals in total, three in the league, and of course that hat trick as well helped him on his way. But his overall play, I think, taken into consideration, uh, it was a no-brainer. Aye, and it, it shows you how quickly things can change as a football player. You know, one minute you're uh, one minute you're on the edges, and people are not really fancy. And next minute you're the saviour. Things you got to remember: Jill Kamakis, Mom's first touching uh, uh, for Celtic, is missing a penalty, and then uh, the real hero, Kyogo Furuhashi, gets injured. Who who can Celtic turn to? Now you've reached a situation where. Nobody, you know, the the fact that Kyogo, you know, wasn't part of the squad on Sunday, you know, people were saying that's fine. We've got we've got a centre forward. I mean, that is a pretty massive turnaround for him in a, in a few months. So good on him. And I always think as well for players, that, uh, and Richard know more about this again, is that the mental strength to come to another country when things maybe initially don't go well for you either. And then just to make things go well for you, I think that's a really powerful message. Well, if anything, and I know he's had a lot of plaudits, uh, the manager, Ange Postecoglou. If anything, I think he deserves a lot of credit because <coughs> apart from obviously trying to s- straight bat any criticism that was coming uh, his way or the team's way early on in the season, he was uh, consistent in saying, look, 
Some of these players have to get up to speed. Gio Kamakis is working away, he picked mm. up an injury. He's got to get up to speed and get used to the game. And suddenly, you know, along with Maeda, Celtic fans have seen two players that have, have almost taken their vision away from Kyogo and everything he does and started to look at the merits of them. Maeda's work rate in the game against Rangers was incredible. And Gio Kamakis is a real thorn in the side. Yeah, and I think what people... A lot of the fans at the game would have seen it, but before the game, Maeda was out when all the other players were still in the tunnel. He was out mm. doing is either before the game or half time. He was doing like twenty and forty yard doggies. Yeah, just obviously to try and wind yeah. himself up or yeah, get right ready up. for the game. Yeah. Now, when you watch the way he plays, you think you do enough in the game that you don't need to do that beforehand. But he's just, and I think you know how to endear yourself to fans, show them that you're willing to mm. work mm. exceptionally hard for the cause. Yeah. Maeda does it, and he also then brings quality. Mm. Jack and Marcus does it, and he brings goals. I mean, if you look at if you looking as a young player, as a striker, who do I want to? to look at, to learn, look mm. at someone like Jackie Marcus in the box. He's mm. never stood still, he's mm. constantly on the move, and as a defender, it's a nightmare, mm. you know, because n typically with <coughs> a lot of strikers, the ball goes wide, you've got your man, the cross doesn't mm. come in, they check back, and you think, well, he's not going to move, I can just hold on to him. Mm. But Jackie Marcus then makes another run, mm. then he makes a, a third run if he needs to, and that's why he tends to find himself in space mm. in the box, because he's constantly on the move, and his work rate, you know, against the ball as well, mm. and we've seen it on Sunday, that is, again, is phenomenal, and when you've got two guys like that at the yeah. top end of the pitch, See, as a defender, you're absolutely buzzing because the ball stays up there for far longer the, than it mm. needs to and it doesn't become waves of attack and it's fantastic. There was that scene at the end of the game on Sunday, you know, when when the referee blew the whistle. G. Kamakis and Maeda sort of went to hug each other and ended up on the floor. They both of them just <laughs> collapsed. Yeah. They just collapsed and you went, phew, because I would really like to see the numbers. I mean, it's not a stats game. We know that's about quality and that, but that's a... That's a and, you know, you know, stats can be real looked at and see the, the amount of yards that, that, that Maeda in particular would put in. Yeah. And then short sprints. Uh, you know, I would like, I would love to have a look we at that. We were actually data. discussing it in the dressing room mm. the other day because we're, we're typically 11 and a half <clears> kilometres. <throat> you know, the top end would be tw kind of 11 and a half, 12 kilometres. But we were, we were talking about Maeda. You're, you're looking for <coughs> 13 kilometres <coughs> at I, least. I, at least, and a uh, lot of that speed is well. a lot of it's high intensity um, mm. sprint, and which you know typically wipes your muscles out. But mm. um, like I say, you know, if you're a football fan and you're watching, the first thing you ask your your players to do is work hard, uh, and, and both of those players work exceptionally hard. And then on top of that, they also bring a lot of quality. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and over and above that, um, listen, uh, they managed to get the win against Rangers, six points clear. Everybody's talking about the title in the bag. Uh, Gio Kamakis is having none of it. It was really important for us to win this game, and uh, now from now on we will lead the we lead the race uh, by six points. It's uh, it's not over yet, I can say, but uh, it's an advantage that we have to to protect till the end by winning every single game. Yeah, um, interesting uh, from him there. I always worry about players who can wear that type of t-shirt. I would never get away with that. I actually turned up at the fives in a in a t-shirt like that. Hugh um. and to a man they absolutely slaughtered me <laughs> what did uh, you expect to happen Peter? well the, the <laughs> I mean, honestly uh, the let's have a little when, conversation when, 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 my, when McCoy's turned up I thought, <laughs> I'm glad I'm you know, I thought I'm in trouble <laughs> but when the rest of them all turned up and had that on I thought to myself I'm not getting away with that you know do you know that the definition of bravery is, is if you want the addiction the definition of bravery is Peter Martin turning up on that <laughs> strip <laughs> by for the fights knowing that Ali McCoy will be there yeah, yeah. Um, not, 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 um, not actually at that particular <laughs> top. I have to tell you, before I got belters, but nevertheless, um, I did actually. I don't know if we, we were able to hear that there. That mm. that that. Yeah, yeah, we could. Mm. We were a wee bit worried we couldn't hear what Jack and Mac has had to say. But yep, um, it was interesting to see the stats mm. you mentioned there, Hugh, and and you mentioned as well, Richard. I actually read this on Twitter, and I thought to myself, wow. Maeda stats Sunday, 342 sprints, um, uh, 34 kilometres of pitch covered, average speed 45 kilometres an hour, uh, the fastest speed run by any player in Scotland. Um, you know, incredible you know, the amount of, uh, you know, miles he's covering in that yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you said he covered 34 kilometres. Yeah. I don't think he covered 34 no. kilometres. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> he, he, didn't, he definitely never co no. he never covered 34 kilometres hold on a minute 34 kilometres of pitch covered sorry 
that would mean sort of geographically, yeah, right, okay, the, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, but uh, the, yards the, the, run, the amount of sprints but, uh, is, is yeah. incredible. You know, uh, over 300 sprints. Mm. Um, it, it's just, like, like I say, it shows you the, the makeup of the guy that he was out doing that before the game as well. Mm. Just, just obviously to get his body ready for for the way he plays. I think the one, the one that got me, and it was early in the game. But I think James Tavernier steps away, and as uh, a fullback, normally when you step in with the ball, the striker gives up, uh, and he just kept going and kept going, and, and he actually tackled it out, and you can see Tavernier look round as if to say, "Jesus, I thought I had time there." Yeah, um, but and that goes a long way, like I say, that gets your team right up the I'm pitch, and, and when you're behind that watching it, you're absolutely buzzing because uh, you're thinking, "Right, he's on it today. He's going to help us get up the pitch," and it makes a huge difference to the way they play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing about it, remember, you've got to have a thick skin on this show uh -huh. um, and be able to take the banter with it. And a big thank you to um, on our YouTube feed. Some people don't use their real name, obviously, for <laughs> obvious yeah. reasons. Um, but I'm going to read out "Meet His Murder." He says, "I, because you wouldn't have turned up in a Rangers top, Peter, for the six of sides." Um, I, listen, um, there, there may be uh, photographic evidence to the contrary. Well, I think I played I played in the Rangers strip at Ibrox for Sandy Jarden, which was, well, I, Sandy was a top man. Good <coughs> friend of mine worked with me in the commentary position. I would have I would have played in it. Listen, you're, you're a long time dead, no. and it's only a game of football, for God's sake. Um, I, needless to say, I gave the top back at the end. You know how Richard mm. says sometimes you keep a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> you love that, Sandy. <laughs> Give it to somebody else, will you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for that meet is murder. We'll get to know your real name one day if you've got an opinion and you can have uh, a spine to put your name to it. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, um, it's getting interesting. I think the weekend is going to be massive. I mean, I, I, if we're talking about getting excited about the whole European situation for Rangers and Braga, at the weekend... Uh, there's so many great games. I could I could go to any one of them and not be disappointed because the implications are there, Richard, aren't they? I think this is the this is the moment that whoever's idea it was to have a split in Scotland, mm. this is the moment that they sit back and go, mm. I did try and tell you mm. because this is this is fantastic. You've got four was it four, four or five teams that can mm. be top six, also bottom six. Yeah. Then there's a European spots available. Um, it's, it's going to it's, hopefully it'll be a fantastic weekend and. During the course of the, the games, you want to see teams kind of leapfrogging each other and dropping down depending on the score of those games. But so I don't think there's a game in the league that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, that's that's when you know it's going to be an exciting weekend. Yeah, I mean, we've we had a big discussion about it yesterday. Hugh and lots of our uh, viewers, subscribers have uh, been mentioning the fact that quite simply uh, I've written off Aberdeen. I think they're I think they're not going to make that top six at Ross County. Um, have had a fantastic season as well. Yeah. They've potentially got the Player of the Year in Regan Charles Cook. You'll certainly, if he's not a nominee, a nominee, I'll be absolutely gobsmacked. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you. As Richard rightly pointed out, we narrowed it down to six teams <laughs> who can all get in top though. six. I'm being kind with St Mirren. I don't think they've got a chance. But there's five in there with permutations no. going right, left, and centre. Aberdeen. Aberdeen are up against it, you know, and have been for some while. I mean, it's just been, it's almost been a season where they just want to limp towards the end and then give uh, Jim Goodwin, t you know, some money in the summer. He's obviously going to clear things out as well. We see that already uh, um, this week. He's not going to be a man who uh, is unafraid of his own opinion. Yeah. Jim knows that whatever he does up there, it's... It, it was a wee bit naughty though with the Considine thing, you. I mean, for God's sake, I mean, the, the, as, as Richard mm. pointed out yesterday, listen, players go in and round one is, well, I want this, and you uh. go, well, we're giving you this, uh, you know, and to suddenly turn round and, you know, they came out in more or less in that statement to make Andrew Considine look uh. greedy, and then you have to wait 24 <sighs> hours to get... You know, as I always say, there was a there was a great 1980s Guardian newspaper uh, advert where there's a businessman with a bookcase, uh, uh, with a briefcase, and he's standing there and a punk rocker runs towards mm -hmm. him. And your automatic view of it is the punk rocker's going to steal the briefcase. Uh, and then when you see it from another angle, he pushes the guy into the, way, the door, the, out the, the way, way of the falling bricks, bricks yeah. and it just says... The Guardian, the whole picture. If it was Sachi and Sachi that did it, uh, it was magnificent. It's a, and it's about getting everything in context before you form the real opinion. Considine's offered, you know, half of what he's on before. Mm. And, and I admit he's 35. I've got no problems with Jim Goodwin 
building his own side and saying, well, I don't want you and I don't want you. That's mm-hmm. fine. But I think they were a bit naughty the way they accused the player of suddenly leaking it. And then the way they worded it, it was as if Andrew Constantine's greedy. Well, there's two things. I think, first of all, Aberdeen have been guilty of a lot of missteps this season. I don't know if it's because Dave Cormack is maybe not used to running a big football business, and Aberdeen's a big football business in Scotland, and there's been a lot of missteps happening there. And the second thing is, this thing for clubs always wanting to give out statements. I mean, sometimes just keep your mouth shut. Sometimes yeah. it, sometimes you know the what. Sometimes it doesn't need a statement. It really doesn't. Sometimes negotiations can happen between player and, uh, and employer and it should be confidential. And even if the player, and I'm not saying under consequences, but even if players leak it and all that, you don't have to. You can you can go high rather than go low. You can just say, just we'll just leave this. It's not necessary to give a statement on every player's contract negotiation, even if the player comes out. It just isn't necessary. You've yeah. got, you got you can take the higher ground. And I think Aberdeen might have been a. I think they've been a pretty unsure all season about certain things that have been said and done. Have to me, indicated a club that is not fully cognizant of what, you know, what is the best way to do things. Yeah. Uh, By the way, uh, over and above that, I I knew 24 hours later there'd be another twist to this saga. The other thing about it is, so what if the agent leaked it? I don't think it's the type of thing that Andrew Constantine would suddenly Mm. go to his best mate Mm. in the papers. He's too old in the the head for that. If the agent does it, that's because that's what agents do. Oh, yes. But you've also got to remember that it... So Andrew's not going to be Aberdeen, so he needs another club. Yeah. He needs teams to know that he's going to be available. So yeah. an agent's job is to try and generate that interest in your player. So he's got every right, in my opinion, to go out in there and do that. We're, and, and I don't even, you know, I agree with you that this, the statements, um, but, you know, it's for the media, it's quite fun. Oh, it's great, it For us, we don't mind. We yeah. love it, aye. Oh, yeah. You don't need to divulge the ins and outs and the money and the percentages mm. and all this kind of stuff. And, and I think that's wrong because... From everyone on the outside, you go. Oh, he was offered hundred grand, at least a hundred grand contract. Um, then that's a great wage. Mm. It's a, is a great wage. But how many people right now would accept a 50 percent reduction on the wage they were they had mm. before? And we're in football, and yes, you know, people will say it's just because I'm the, the age I'm at. It's one of the only workplaces that you can openly discriminate against someone's age. Okay. Yeah. If Andrew Considine can still do the work, he can still do the runs, he can still play the games. Then why shouldn't he get paid the same as what at least the same as what he was getting paid? And I just think she's right. The whole way it's been done, they've now tried to go after Andrew. Now, you know, I, I've played with Andrew. I know him. You know, I know his family. He's not out there for the money. Mm. I think he just wants to be paid a fair what he did, would feel himself would be a fair wage for the, the service that he's given that club. Yeah. Which, let's face it, over five hundred games, fourth in the appearance. It's it's. You know, I just think it's it'll leave a, a real bad taste in his mouth, and it, and he's probably devastated. This is his his boyhood club, a club that he's loved. And I played for him. His dad played mm-hmm. for him, and the way he's just almost kind of been turfed out. Mm-hmm. Now, like you said, there are certain ways to do things. Players move on, players leave clubs. We all know this, but a lot of that can be kept in house and Absolutely. can be respectful yeah. between the two parties. It's a they didn't business. know. They didn't know about the figures until Andrew Considine eventually the whole figures come out 24 hours later. They released that mm. statement and it was it was geared towards saying, you know, the, the conclusion you were being guided mm. down was he's asking for too much money, this boy. He's 35. But let's not forget, you, I think you made a very good point there. He's 35 and just got two caps for Scotland. Right. Whether there were whether there was sentiment or whatever, he was still good enough for, for uh, Steve Clark to say, by the way, this boy, he could do a job for me now. I need mm. his experience to come in. But even in Peel, I would even move, move beyond that. Is that I would take all the the pros and cons of Andrew Considine out of it and say this is not a way to conduct a football club. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. I mean, and people can say, oh, it was leaked there first, and it was maybe his, when we don't know who leaked it and all that, but you know, maybe. He's, that's fine. That's what you know. People in the game do. They talk to people. They try to promote the interests of their clients. And 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 and, and uh, Rogers made a very good point that there is a there is a future for Andrew Constantine beyond Petrarch. Yeah. There's a time for the club just to say, just let that be. 
Jim just let them, there's no winners in this for us. There's no, no winners in have, us having a series of statements against a player who's still in, in our ploy. How would you, how, how would you, you know, you sit in a boardroom, what strategy are you, you, you yeah, trying to implement? You might also need him in the coming ah, Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> they're, I, they're not in a, a great position. They're, they're only six points above St Johnston, so they might need Andrew in the next couple of weeks. And what's the upside, what's upside getting the fans on your side for a few moments? Oh, well, seems to, obviously it seems to be very marginal to me. Yeah. And the downside, don't do your business and like if you, that. If you're going to offer a bit of balance on it, I've got no problem whatsoever with Jim Goodwin building his own side and saying, well, listen, uh, he's not part of my plans, but if he was going to negotiate with him, uh, and if, a, if something comes out like that, so what? Every manager's had to deal with various things. You're still in the zone of sitting across a table and saying, OK, see, after round one, this is what we offered you. I've gone back to Dave Cormack. I can give you this. No. That's round two. And if at that point he says, look, Jim, it's just we're too far apart, even after round two. Thanks. Uh, I've had a great time. I'm off skate. I'd be hugely shocked, hugely shocked if Jim Goodwin had any to do with Aberdeen statements about player negotiations. Yeah. Well, I'm always a, a little bit reticent of, of uh, you know, throwing the spear when you don't mm. know exactly where the no. where the leak or where the, uh, you know, the, the way they wanted to actually put out that, that statement. I just thought it was poor from Aberdeen's point of view. Um, Andrew Considine, I'll tell you right now, there'll be more than a few clubs trying to get a hold of him. Um, I'll tell you, one game at the weekend, I've, I've said that there are so many that are worth worthy of our eye because, of course, everybody will be looking and saying, OK, the Old Firm game is past now, but Celtic have got St Johnson, St Johnston battling away, have got themselves a bit of breathing space. There's a Dundee derby to talk about. Um, but um, from my own point of view, I looked at the whole thing and decided, Tynecastle, Hearts, Hibs, the first of two games against each other and Hearts with a great chance uh, to possibly consign Hibs if uh, it goes um, the way that we think with other clubs, mm -hmm. possibly throw them down into the bottom six. Well, our reporter Kerry Pollock has been out there, first of all, into the Hearts camp at the Orium. I'm here outside the Orium in Edinburgh where Hearts boss Robbie Nielsen has been looking ahead to the Edinburgh Derby that will take place this Saturday at Tynecastle. The last time these two clubs met, they resulted in two nil-nil draws. So three points for Hearts on Saturday means that they could potentially knock their rivals out of a place in the top six and also could give them a psychological advantage heading into the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. But Robbie Nielsen is confident his team can let the football do the talking. When you play a derby, you need to win your first head, your first tackle, your first contact, make sure that the, the physical side it takes care of itself and then if the football does break out of periods, you need to have the composure to go and play. You know, I think there's been periods, in the, especially the home game at Tynecastle in the last derby, that we, we played some decent football, even at Easter Road, but it's always difficult to fully control a game. Looking at who will be available for Robbie Nielsen come Saturday, he told us that Nathaniel Atkinson and Gary mckay Stephen will be available for selection. Whilst it's too soon for Cammy Devlin, he will be back in time for the Scottish Cup semi-final next weekend. The atmosphere inside Tyne Castle will be crackling as two teams will be battling it out for three points. Yep, well that's <coughs> who uh, Kerry giving us the Hearts camp tomorrow. She'll be out there uh, in Trenent uh, to talk to Hibs, Sean Maloney. Uh, and get the thoughts of some of the players ahead of this big one. It's crucial. I like Rob. I like Robbie's attitude to it. It's a derby. Uh, get the crunching tackles <coughs> in, and then football might break out at some point, eh? <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's um, that's how derby certainly used to be. Um, you've got to kind of earn your right to, to play your football in the game, um, and you know the, the tackles will need to be somewhat less crunching than, than they used to be. <laughs> um, otherwise, they won't be. You know, they'll be finish the game with seven men in the park each, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like I said, Tynecastle has always been one of my favourite stadiums to play yeah. in. The, the atmosphere is always uh, brilliant. You know, I've obviously n I've never played in an Edinburgh derby, so that, you know that'll be intensified even more. Um, and you know, like you say, what a chance you've got to to consign your your, your nearest rivals to to bottom six football potentially. Um, Hearts, I'm sure, will be very very up for this game, as as will Hibs, of course. Um, but I, you know, I, I do fancy Hearts in this. Yeah, do you fancy? Who do you fancy? It also, be good to see Tam's face on Monday. <laughs> well, funny you should say that because I was talking to our um, producer and uh, some of our uh, female journalists who work for us, uh, and we're having a bit of banter, and they were talking about you know obviously outfits for the PFA awards, mm. and they were talking about how difficult it is, and men should maybe realise 
how difficult it is to walk on high heels and high shoes, mm. Hugh. Um, but I think Tam McManus will realise that on <laughs> Saturday when he <laughs> makes his way into <laughs> Town <laughs> Castle, <laughs> disguised as Dustin <laughs> Hoffman <laughs> in Tootsie. Tootsie right? You know, he's going he's to he's get up there so early to that gantry <laughs> to avoid <laughs> the pelters. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think it's really difficult to, to, to make a, a real strong case for Hibs. Uh, and, and, you know, there's always a, the cliche about Derby's been hard to call, but uh, Hearts, Hearts have had a great season and one that's not really been remarked upon to the extent of, you could make a case when you take, certain is are always going to finish first and second. Hearts have really kind of won two consecutive titles. They won the first division title, then they've won the rest of title. Yeah. And they've won the rest of title pretty comfortably, you know, with, and never really been challenged all season. So they've, I think they've, you know, some of the the, the praise for them has been mooted the, yeah. rather than the than else. Let's not Nels. forget, Hugh, this is, a, this is a side that, you know, early on, I mean, I watched them at the start of the season absolutely thump Dundee. Mm. Um, you know, and there was a... There was a a couple of games where suddenly people are thinking, maybe Robbie Nielsen will be mm. the favourite for the, the the sack because there's a, there's a section of the heart support don't but like I've him. Never liked him. Uh, absolutely, but then all of a sudden he just started to go on a run with them, and uh, they just were motoring along. And and I think you know when you get to that situation, suddenly you find yourself with nobody near you. The only thing that I think is difficult for Hearts fans is they're saying to themselves, "Come on." semi-final give us something to look forward to at the end of the season as well uh, but they've they've really done well in getting to finals you know recently I mean had the heartbreak of losing the shootout uh, to Celtic as well you know as I said it's a big game for 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 Sean but I actually think the next game the the week after that for Sean Maloney might be the bigger game because the see a cup final I mean, I, I don't know what it's looked among the professionals. Maybe people say, I bet top six gets you money, top six gets you this. But a, a Scottish Cup final for the fans, you know, hearts, you know, beating your rivals to get to a Scottish Cup final. I mean, that that's a huge game as well. But the, I mean, we've just we're absolutely getting derbies thrown at us. We've got two this week and then two next week. Yeah, and of course the implications for the weekend in Dundee it's just yeah. huge because I think Dundee are probably looking, and I think this is where Mark McGee's head's at, he's probably looking at it and saying, listen, if we could win this derby, we're taking it as odds on that St Johnson are going to lose to Celtic. Mm. So that's the way they're looking at it and, and thinking, this is a chance to peg them back, and then there's the five games, we're not out of it yet. Yeah, of course, and they've got to hope, you know, they've got to do that, they've got to, they've got to win the game, mm. Dundee excuse me, must win the game um, if we get any chance of survival because, like you say, mm. all will be an equal settled beat St Johnson. So, that, that you know, that St Johnson are not going to get any more points. Dundee have got a chance to gain three points and they really have to they have to win the match. But I think going back to what Hugh was saying about the, the what players want, it's perspective. So finishing in the top six, fifth or sixth for, for Hibs, for Hearts, you know, mm. is not an achievement. You know, for Ross County, St Mirren, it would be an you know, amazing achievement. So it's all about perspective. So, yes, I agree. Hibs could lose this game, fall into the bottom six, get to a cup final and still have, you know, mm. kind of finish off the season a little bit of style depending on how the final goes. Um, and, and, you know, as a player, you want to win things. You mm. don't win anything for finishing fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth. Yeah. But you can win a cup. So I think you're right in that the, the, the cup game is a bigger game for Hibs. But I think this game, it'll probably give us a marker of, of who's going to be, in, you know, who will be favourites for that cup game. Yeah, I'm going to pose this question to Tam tomorrow, but quite a few people have been sending us uh, messages in the app as well, which is quite simply, I wonder if Tam was offered the option um, for Hibs, would they would he sacrifice the game tomorrow for the cup, go into the bottom six? I don't know. It's a question to ask him. I mean, I know my personal thing would be if I was a fan of Hibern, then I, I, I could be I could be quite phlegmatic or philosophical about finishing seventh. If you parlayed that with you beat your biggest rivals at Hamden in a semi final and go to a final with a chance, okay, they'll play Celtic or Rangers in the final, and they'll will be favourites. The Hibs have done it before, yeah. and uh, and to go to go to a final for a club that's been starved of Scottish Cup success, we know that historically, 2016 ending that huge drought. I know what my feeling would be. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, as a player, sacrifice I would, it, would you? Yeah that's, what I, yeah, that's what I mean. You know, yeah. Hibs finish seventh in the league means nothing. Even if they finish sixth, mm. even if they finish fifth, I don't know how the European thing works, if that would get them to Europe. But it, as a player, you're not going to look back and go, remember the time you finished sixth in the league? But you're going to remember the time you fin- you played in the Scottish Cup final, or you potentially won the Scottish mm. Cup final. So yeah, I would def- I would imagine Tam would, if he put his player hat back on, he would say, yeah, I don't mind finishing bottom six if we get to the final. Yeah, no surprise that Sean Maloney has come out. He was speaking to a number of supporters, just saying that he's already been out there speaking face to face with players that he wants to come in. The reason why I'm going to read this out to you is because I think it's an indication of what he's trying to do. He says, I have to find out what the player is like as a character, whether he fits the values of this club, which uh, were in place many, many years before I arrived. If I don't feel the player has those values, then I won't sign him. But I have to get face to face with the player to work that out. A lot of people think that's been lost in the last you know, <coughs> five or ten years because mm. you know a, a guy can walk into mm. uh, a room with a stack of videos if, and go right here's the player do you want him here's the stats on him here's all his good bits on video yeah I mean a lot of uh, you know managers will do their, their due diligence mm. they will phone around the, the first person I would imagine that you contact if you're trying to sign a player is the manager of that club yeah. you know and sometimes players want to leave clubs but how do they conduct themselves do they still mm. still work hard do they still do them properly that can go a long way. I, I can understand why Sean wants to meet them face to face because you know I could listen to your opinion on someone and you you could think he's a great guy and then I could meet him and just totally clash. Yeah. So you don't know until you actually meet people. Um, I just again I know it's this time of the season and everything that, that managers and players do is always kind of publicised. But what is that saying to the players that you've got now? Mm. The players that are trying to get you into top six, trying to get to a cup final. That, I might be one of the guys he doesn't want. Mm. And I just think, you know, th- yes, do that, but you don't need to be so open with it and, and tell everybody that's what you're doing. Because I just think, you know, I had it once with a manager who the whole pre-season spent on the phone trying to get in other players. And you could see, the, the, myself included, looking around going, is he, is he trying to replace me? Am I one of the ones he wants? It? And yeah. I just think it unsettles him a little bit. We had it with, with, with Robinson um, at St Mirren talking about the players that want to leave and heads turned. And I just think the timing... I agree with what he's doing, meet the player, get a sense for the, for who they are, but I just think you don't need to tell us you're going to do that you know, a week before a cup, a cup semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's psych- a brutal, it's a brutal business. I mean, for a so player, was, see, everybody always says, oh, I'd love to be a football player. We all would have, we all would have loved that. But the more you get to know it, the more you see um, uh, what happens in the business of football. It's, I mean, what other life where you just, one day you wake up and somebody in a whim just says to you, out of his own choice, just says to you, you're emptied. Yeah, but can you imagine, I mean, as a joiner or, or anything else, even as a, and, and we're part of this, um, you know, game, which is mm. quite simply, footballers every day of their life can get slaughtered from all corners. Uh, One day you're a genius, the next minute you're a Oh, it's volatile, that. I mean, it's that, crazy. That, 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 that's part of it as well. I mean, it's, and I think it's now, in fact, I don't think it's worse than it's ever been. But, because I can take it to what it's like as a journalist, a footballer. Obviously, I'm down there and they're getting all that. But in the old days, there was no way of them attacking you personally in print or in there was no social media there was yeah. no you could you could maybe get the, the odd bad shout in a supermarket and all that fair enough but now the the i mean i mean that, that's one thing that and, and you know the pfa are, i know are strong on you know is educating kids about what they're going to expect because you see when you're talking about thick skinned you really have to have it in, the, in this game now yeah absolutely that's something that the pfa does continually going around trying to teach everyone, you know, attach your brain before you attach your fingers to the phone. Um, okay, just uh, before we go, uh, I'm going to draw your attention to something we're running on the 28th of May. The 28th of May is the Champions League final. Who is going to get there? Um, we don't know, but there are some tasty teams in it and we're going to have a great night out if you want to join us. Join us for the Champions League final live on the big screens in the Kerrydale Suite at Celtic Park on the 28th of May. Yep, it's your chance to get a table of 10 on the night. It'll be a fantastic final, it is every year, so get in quick to get your table. Yep, we'll have prizes on the evening, we've got a special guest speaker for you, and over and above that, there's the big final itself. Who's going to be there? 28th of May, it's a Saturday night not to be missed. It's live at the Kerrydale Suite at Celtic Park. Hope to see you there. 
Yeah, you can get all the details on YouTube or on our Facebook page as well. Right, good night. Tam Cowan is going to come along with me. Incidentally, the guy on the left of me there was Alan Ruff. Uh, just he, in case he was on the got, show at one he point. He used to be it? on the show, yeah, a long time ago, mm. but uh, it's, it's all gone pear shaped for him. Uh, now, English Premier League, uh, there's some big oh. games this weekend, but last <laughs> just a night, bit. <laughs> I have to say, are Everton finally going to be going out of that division? Well, you always look at, it's particularly the Hams in the Premier League, but I think in, 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 in any league, you always see you always see a team that's got the, the no parachute, has jumped out of the plane, and suddenly there's no parachute, and it's up plummeting down and they come from 10th, 14th, 16th, 18th that was a awful result for them last night, yeah. awful result Peter, I watched uh, a chunk of it after I'd watched the Champions League in my own obsessive way, you're 2-1 up at Burnley against relegation rivals and you contrive to lose the game 3-2, that is not good and there just seems to be I, I noticed Sean Dyke said something really interesting which he, you know and he's usually very media friendly and cautious and he admitted at half time he told these players he says he said eh, I don't think this this is a team that doesn't know how to win. So if, you know people are saying that yeah. it's I think it's really dangerous for them now. Yeah, absolutely. I must admit I wouldn't like to see them go out of the division, but uh, nevertheless, um, it's mm. it, it, they're really up against it now. They're going to have to battle. This is going to be one of those nail biters. I think the last time I witnessed Richard a nail biter. It might have been Joe Royal who was the manager. Uh, it could have been that long ago. Yeah, and they, they, they beat Wimbledon in the last day of the yeah, season or something like that. Yeah, it's sticking in the back of my mind, but nevertheless. Um, just before we go, Champions League, uh, we talked about it there, the, the final. We're going to have a great night on that night. We tend to take it around various venues and we're really looking forward to it. But uh, who's going to get there? I'll tell you, Real Madrid, would you bet against them? No, oh, I told you that was my pick. <laughs> That's his third pick. <laughs> third. Uh, Ruff is still going for PSG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah well, you've got Kareem Benzema in my nah. line. We watched him there before the show. It's two headers. I mean, it's it's. we're arguing over which header was the best, but uh, they're both phenomenal. Uh, um, what a talent. I think this is his, his best ever season in terms of goals mm. um, at the age of 35. You know, maybe Andrew, Andrew Constant should give, <laughs> give his agent a call. <laughs> well, listen, players nowadays are changed. You know, you would be finished some in, in the days 34, 35. I'll tell you, I'd off all. Yeah, absolutely. If you got to 33, people were and, talking and about a testimonial. Um, but Chelsea, I don't know, the bottom seems to have fallen out of their forum. And uh, Thomas Tuchel was quick to point that out. Since national break, the, the first half is a, is a, um, is a repetition of the, of the second half against Brentford and in a, in a quarter final against Real Madrid. Um, so far of our, our level. In absolutely everything, what the game demands, that you you cannot expect a result from 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 this kind of performance. Yeah, um, strange. I don't know what's happened there. You know, and by the way, you can draw a line in it. Russia invades Ukraine. Suddenly, Abramovich out of the picture, and and I don't know. That, There's that a slight wee rumbling before that with with Lukaku and, and Tuchel not getting on. So you, you, what you've got last night is Benzema scoring a hat trick, and you've got Lukaku sitting on the bench. That's a big difference. I think, uh, yeah, but the, you're quite correct. The Russian thing has really impacted on them. There's been a lot of focus on that, a lot of questioning in press conference. Every time the players are questioned about it as well. And the players, God bless them, what are they going to say? <laughs> I, mean, yeah. going? I think what we've got to remember with this is that team won the Champions League last year. Basically, that team won it. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, just before we go, Hugh, I didn't want to m miss out on the fact of asking you a question, which we all been discussing yesterday. I mean, potentially, Steve Hodges got Diego Maradona's <sighs> top. It could go for four million at Sotheby's. And I was just thinking uh, yesterday as well. We we're talking about Pelly's shirt at one hundred twenty-six thousand from nineteen seventy. Jeff Hurst went for ninety-one thousand. Mm. If there was one top that you'd like in your possession you know, from a specific game with a favourite player, what would it be? I'd take two because I'm greedy. Pelly's from uh, from uh, Azteca, 1970, and Billy McNeil's from Lisbon, 1967. Wow. Um, I would take Kenny Douglas's from 1978 against Bruges at Wembley. You? I thought, I think I'd be Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, 2002 World oh. Cup final. Scored two against Germany on the World Cup. Was yeah. that 2002 it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. You take that? That would be mine, yeah. Good one. I've got his Inter Milan one. I'll let you look at it. Um, <laughs> anyway, apart from that... <laughs> 
<laughs> you like you gave me a nice wee look at your Dortmund one today as yeah, well. So you're, you're very generous. Nice like today. Really annoying you the other. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, always good to be in the company of uh, young and old. You can decipher who <laughs> I'm talking about. Um, thank you very much, to each and every one of you. Don't forget if you download the PLZ Soccer app, it is live on there every day at your fingertips on your phone it's got all the breaking football stories and of course you can watch all our content and if you're on youtube hit the subscribe button and join the football family we'll see you tomorrow thanks for watching